Hey, Tom's back with you again on my YouTube channel, Rhythms Riddle. Thanks for joining me. Well, uh, what I just wanted to make a second note about that last video, uh, about Finnegan's Wake being untranslatable. And it's like, absolutely so. And why is that? Because it's, um, nothing is ever happening per se. That's the thing. He, he has, he's writing in, uh, he's painting with the logos, with language and meaning. And he does that. So for instance, one word isn't any one word, the, whether it's, you know, how, however misspelled it is or isn't, it's never exactly that one word by itself. It's uh, often, it's an amalgam of several words. Uh, the, the meaning has to be extracted because it's like a thicket or a bramble bush or a huckleberry, thin huckleberry bush, a thicket or a thin, thin thicket. <laughs> the, the puns uh, are rampant running through all throughout the wake. Not just on that, but on everything through, through literary history throughout the world. You know, from Prospero and Ariel all the way back to, uh, Adam and Eve and all the way up to the, the modern times of, you know, his, his contemporary times when it was written, all through the, the times when it was written and like the, the classical writers and the, you know, there's every word is an amalgam and you, you, there's nothing ever is happening per se, actually. And you never know who's speaking. So, uh, I mean, you, you don't just translate a book like that. It's impossible, absolutely impossible. Like I said, if anyone claims to have done it, you can be assured they're, they're charlatans. It's a total fraud. Total. Now, you can translate his other book, um, his, the, the book before it, Ulysses. Well, of course, of course. That was a day book. It was a type of book you could translate. Finnegan's Wake was written to be a night book. It's in many languages. I mean, it's mostly in English, but you can't just translate it. I mean, because there's, there's too, there's too much meaning in every little bit, in every little, you know, just like stray bit. And it's discombobulated to the max. It's a night book. It's nothing that's going to, and, uh, uh, unfold its meaning to you just right away. It's a thicket of meaning, right? You, you, it's, you can't translate a book like that. You have to approach it as it is in the languages that it's in. And the more languages you know, the better. And if, I think if you don't know English, then it's going to be, well, I mean, if, for, for instance, or if you only know English, like me, I only know English. It's almost, it's, if you don't know English, it's going to be almost impossible. You got to know English. But if you only know English, it's going to be pretty much impossible. You got to know other languages. The more you know, the, the more you, you, you'll be able to extract out of Finnegan's wake. But it's true with anything. The more history you know, the more medicine you know, the more alchemy you know, the more uh, poets you know, the more playwrights you know. Like, you, and that's not just Shakespeare. There's John Donne, there's Cervantes. Like, everything is, uh, everything finds its place in, in, uh, in the Finnegan's Wake. You know, it's re everything is referenced and it's, you know, never exactly, exactly clear what, the references, or if it's two simultaneous references at once, which would be a triple entendre, you know? So, well, it's, it's the kind of book you, it will never, you don't, you can't, it, it, <laughs> you know, it's, he, he is one of a kind. I mean, who could have written a book like this that's impossible to translate because of, of how thick it is? It's a huge thicket and dense forest and jungle of, of meaning. And that meaning has to be extracted slowly, like an arc, like you were as though you have to approach it like uh, an archeologist. That's literally it. You can't approach it like you approach other books. Well, I'm gonna read it. And oh, oh that, I read it, I finished it, you know. <laughs> the, there's, 
it's pretty much pompous and stupid to say you do that because that means you just sort of phonetically washed the, the phonetics over your, your forehead and said, you've, you've done it. All the phonetics that were in Findigan's Wake have washed over my forehead and I've come to the, the end of it. It's like that, what absolute bullshit. That's not how you approach a, a book like this. You don't even know what it's about. You don't even get any of the references. I mean, may, I mean, obviously you do. Uh, anybody who's going to devote enough that much time to it has got to be pretty smart. So I, I got to think maybe you do, can approach it like that. If you know a lot of languages, if you know like five languages, then maybe you can just read it through and it makes some sort of poetic sense to you. But for for people, if you you're you're linguistically uh, handicapped with one language or whatever. It's like, well, then, you know, it's um, it's approachable, but it's not the kind of book you say you, you finish it and read. It's the meaning has to be extracted. It's very elusive what's going on. It's not clear at all, even with the skeleton key, even reading it simultaneously after finishing the skeleton key. I have to use the skeleton key as a kind of a, a totem pole to anchor myself into this vast, universal, uh, global, historical cosmogony, which is Finnegan's Wake. There's something going on that he's, it's a night book. Yeah, it's sort of like, just like a day book. It takes place in Dublin. It's, uh, what they say is, it's well, you know, after all, in the end, it is everything you say about it. It is, everything is true and, and in some way. Like, it, it is just the book, the dream. It's the dream of, of one person. But if if that makes any sense, I mean, it's like, well, a dream of one person is, includes a lot of other people. So whose dream is it, really? Is it the person or the person who they're dreaming of? I mean, it's the... Like, deep philosophical problems are constantly worked and reworked throughout the, the Finnegan's Wake. He's not just, you know, trying to entertain people with with savvy wit and, and you know, humor or something. I mean, it's it's full of humor and it's full of wit, but it's it's much, much more than that. It's much more than just wit. That's the thing. And uh, so, thank you. That was just a side note to the, the last video I published, which is a, a, lot, a bit longer than this. Thank you again for uh, the, the great comments that uh, some of you have been leaving me. And the rest of you, I want to just point it out, like, you know, please don't confuse the white comments box for toilet paper. <laughs> 